Now we've got to think of the bisection method as an algorithm. So what are the inputs to this algorithm? The inputs to the algorithm would be the endpoints A, B, of course. We'd be giving those. Some tolerance, which I'll explain in a second. And let's call that just tall. Okay. And we'll set up what's called a max number of iterations. Uh, that is a safety uh, basically so that the uh, algorithm doesn't loop forever and we'll call that say n all right now uh, the output of this algorithm okay will be uh, approximate solution p or a message of failure so it's either uh, the solution solution say we'll call it r or uh, uh, failure means that the bisection method was not successful in finding the root, at least not to the tolerance that we wanted. Okay, so now let's formalize it a bit more and start looking at the steps. So our first step, okay, is going to be we have to set um, i equal to 1, okay, and we will say that um, fa, we'll call it fa, is the value of f, the function, which is given to us. Uh, which we have to define for this um, and because because remember this algorithm is trying to solve fx equals zero on an interval a b that's our objective as was before so fa is equal to uh, the value of f at a and we'll say uh, this is our step one step two then okay logically seems that we'll set up our loop and we'll say while uh, i is, and this is an outer safety loop, while i is less than n, keep doing, uh, do, sorry, do steps, uh, say, 3, 2, um, 3, 2 something, uh, whichever steps we have, let's, uh, let's do that, and we'll do that in a second once we have our number of steps. So, 3 to the last step, okay, uh, 3 to our last step. Anyway, step 3, is the actual calculation so we'll check uh, set to the midpoint of a and b now keep that in mind what the way we will do that is as follows we'll say a is our starting point as we've said plus uh, b minus a uh, so we're going to say b minus a divided by 2 okay and that's going to give us the first r value uh, which is the midpoint of a and b you can clearly see that that's easy to hopefully that's uh, quite uh, simple to follow sorry f r the value of at fat r it's okay and the next thing we'll do is step four and step four is going to be our test now it's our test to see have we found the root uh, or which interval contains the root so f r if fr is equal to 0, it means we have found our root, or uh, b minus a over 2 uh, is less than the tolerance, okay, then output r. Uh, and uh, that which means R is a solution and a procedure is completed and we stop our algorithm here and that's it job done if not we continue we continue the algorithm further and we go to step 5 which means we will increment our I we will uh, set I equal to I plus 1 okay uh, and uh, we'll go to the next step Step six, we need to update, of course, and again, this this is this is the test to see um, if fa fa multiplied by fr is greater than zero, then we will set then set a equals r. So fa equals fr. Pardon me. FA equals FR. And else, 
our else statement, we will say else. So if the above is not true, uh, else set b equal to r. So one of the two. And uh, our final step of this algorithm to stop it, step seven, we'll say. And in step seven, we're going to say output, uh, which could be method failed after n iterations. Method failed. It doesn't mean it doesn't work necessarily. It's just the number of iterations may not be enough. But remember, this, this one is there for safety purposes only. OK? Uh, uh, so it failed after n, n iterations. And we can actually even output that. And we put a stop to the algorithm. And that's basically this algorithm works. So basically, what we're saying is that um, we start with we start with this i over here. Uh, we set it to one. F a is equal to this value, um, which is the value of F a. While a, a, i is less than some tolerance, which you can set to be uh, 50 iterations, 100 iterations, 1,000 iterations. In any way, it's a finite number. Um, we're also in a position now to say steps from 3 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What we want to repeat is up to 6, remember, because 7th is our output. So repeat steps 3 to 6. Now, we will set r equal to the midpoint uh, between a and b. Okay, and that means a plus b minus a over 2. Um, and then we'll say we'll define this fr over here. fr is the value of f at this value r, the midpoint. Uh, so fr is equal to, if fr is equal to 0, which means we found the root, either that or uh, uh, b minus a over 2 is less than the tolerance, then we will output r, which means we found the root. Because the, uh, if you if it's not clear to you why why this part, well keep in mind b minus a over two is what we're adding to a. So if there's uh, so what we're saying is that uh, this this tolerance idea. Let me clarify what the tolerance idea is. So what we're going to say is we're going to say well okay look, whenever you are going to add something to a, if that becomes like close to zero, that means we've actually you know, touch the root. We're very close to the root. So one thing is you can just hit the root, fr equals zero, or you could be very close to the root. So let me uh, let me show you here quickly in the sort of a diagram in a way. So here's a and here's b, for instance. And here is your here's the actual root. Okay, let's call that say p. And r is our um, root. So r happens to be here. Now you see there is a difference. Uh, and there is something to add. So it, so the midpoint of uh, these two will be, say, over here. Sorry, pardon me. So the AB a, midpoint turns out to be, which is pretty close to P. But what's, what you're looking at is what is the distance between P and, uh, P and this R, for instance. This we'll call, this is our R. So as we update R, we should, if, if, the, if the algorithm is working, we should be getting closer and closer to uh, the actual root, which is P, for instance. So it means that the tolerance is basically the difference between this P and this R. Now, you could do that. You could just say, what is the difference between my latest R and my previous R? Okay. Or you could easily say, what is the next midpoint of AB? The, uh, and that midpoint of AB, if it's less than tolerance, would be ex exactly the same thing. So this is how this algorithm, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the stopping criterion for this uh, algorithm over here. Okay, the next thing, uh, you can rephrase this, by the way, you can, you can, if, you, if you don't like that, you can easily go and say, what is the error? Remember, the error is going to be, we don't know what the root actually is, but what we, what we do know is that if... Um, uh, uh, the if the change of sign, okay, if the if the interval being chosen is becoming smaller, it means we're getting very close to the root. Okay. In other words, there's, there's hardly anything to add. Okay. Let's proceed. So we set i equals i plus one here. This is this is just the iteration which is continuing this i over here, which we started with one, and that's just a safety, as you know. Here's the here's the main test, the update part of the algorithm. Uh, and it says that this is the part that says FA multiplied by FR, which we did before, if you remember, to see which interval actually contains. Now, if FA multiplied by FR is greater than zero, then set A equal to 
uh, R, which means that now it, it means that the the root is not between A and R, uh, R, but rather R and B, essentially, is what it's saying. So then FA is equal to FR, else set B equal to R. That's fair enough. So those would be your two intervals. Yeah, it's uh, meaning it's either between uh, the, the what's happening is A and B, right? So now we have AR and we have BR. This part here tells us which either of the two that has a change of sign is the one that is to be the new interval. And in this and this then goes back. We update our new FA is uh, whatever the new A is. Okay, uh, as I said here, A could be R, so it's the updated R, and we go through the algorithm and keep repeating till we either reach our tolerance or we reach our iterations, uh, end of our iterations, or we actually find the exact root FR, which is zero. And that basically wraps up the bisection method. So we'll do an example in the next video. Thank you.